there's a homeschooling model, which it, it isn't a bad one, but it does tend to replicate school. Like that you have a really set curriculum, you have certain things that you're learning. And we were really quite unstructured. And um, my memory of it, maybe it's romanticized, but is effectively that I was taught to read and pretty much left to myself. Like not that there wasn't a lot of guidance, obviously there was, and my parents were both really, really involved. Um, but it was a model of thinking that if someone develops a passionate interest in a subject, they're going to learn everything they need to know about it. I think it's really interesting to think that learning is an individual process, and so if you have a, if you really, really deeply know the things that are near to your heart, even if that's at the risk of not knowing the tiny little smatterings of other things, like maybe that's more interesting for for you, like, and also just for the world in the sense of the development of individuality through education, rather than like developing. I don't know, like the, the school model seems to be preparing people to live within a system, stay within it their entire lives. And I don't think that's, um, I think that's a real damper on any kind of independent thought. I, I feel like there's a paranoia, like there's a really deep educational paranoia around the idea that if people don't learn the particular requirements, they're going to miss out in this very huge way and they don't that is the big lie that is being sold to people that if they're not if they don't go with the state-based education there's going to be some huge missing out in their lives i feel like all these state models are limiting that possible freedom and i do wonder like what kind of kind of artistic social political development would be is being stamped out by like the a higher and higher and higher level of standardization. I was really really passionate about theater from when I was about 13. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a lot of reading about that, and I did some like assistant stage managing to for productions also when it, like as a volunteer when I was really young like 14 15. And conversation was huge. Yeah. Like, I mean, I had an amazing conversational life with my parents and people that they knew. I, Ivan Illich was a friend of my father's and of also my mother's. And we used to go down to these colloquia that he would have at Penn State from when I was 10 to when I was 13 or 14. Mm -hmm. So I would actually just sit on the stairs and like partly be reading and partly be listening to them. And it was amazing. It was a Victorian. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. just something, yeah. something that felt out of a different time. My mom was really good about like assigning me projects where she said, okay, if you're really interested in this or that subject, uh, for f go read everything about it and write me, a, a, like it wasn't like essays, but write a long thing about what you're thinking about this, what you've discovered. And living in a city was really interesting because when I was a little bit older, I just explored a lot. And my parents were really, really into that from when I was about 13, as long as I was fairly street smart, yeah. like going and going to museums and going to see different areas of the city, like with friends and by myself. Yeah. It was really interesting when I got to university because um, a lot of people I knew who I met there, you know, had an amazing time, but had a very profound burnout because they'd been in school since they were like some of them, most of them like three years old. And I, I really did feel like if people were not in a completely standardized system of education, they would get more, they would get more, not less actually out of post-secondary when they got there.